denigrating the authority of the New Testament. They're not just disagreeing with Paul when they say what they're about to say. I want you to see what they say here, everybody. This is a very fascinating thing, too, because here you have um, biblical authority being replaced by something else, which is essentially the authority of the group itself. Herod Agrippa was told by Paul that Paul wanted him to not be in chains and that Paul wanted him to be saved. What does that have to do with the word of God? Because, because Herod is an Edomite, and you believe you believe white folks are Edomites, correct? Do you know, you know Agrippa used to be at the temple every Sabbath? Did you know that? What about it? So it, it Paul like, said he, wa he wanted him to be just like himself. Paul said he wanted Agrippa to be like him. When did, when did Paul's will become God's will? It well, didn't. well, he oh, said. Well, Agrippa asked oh, him if he would be, if he would make him a Christian. Paul juxtaposes his will from God's will in Romans nine. Go ahead. Paul would never. Paul would not deceive a bunch of people in the room with Agrippa by saying that he wanted all of them to be just like him. After Agrippa asked oh, him if he wanted him that, to be a Christian. By, uh, uh, you, you just make. You're making Paul the author of confusion. Oh, okay. Is Paul the author of confusion? Yes, he is. No. Yes. No. You're making Paul the author of confusion. Oh, okay. Is Paul the author of confusion? Yes, he is. No. Yes. No. Yes, he is. God is not oh, the oh, author oh, of confusion, and God inspired Paul. Okay. Is Paul the author of confusion? Yes, he is. No. Yes. All the praises and the honor goes to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah Bahashem, Recha Ha Kodash, and double honors to the elder apostles and elder bishops of Great Millstone. Honors as well to you, brethren. Shalom to you, few sisters, and shalom to the hopefully elect. Peace to you. I want to touch on this. Go into this video. That was posted on Vocab Malone's page about the Sakari Israelites, where this priest, um, Alazar of the Sakari, says that Paul was the author of confusion. And this does kind of happen when you don't want to do the legwork and really go into the understanding of what certain things mean, such as the Agrippa. It's hard for them to stand on that. This also happens when you get into different debates and then you kind of get twisted into following other form of doctrines, right? Because there's a lot of doctrines that says Paul was the author of confusion. Paul, letters of Paul uh, wasn't authentic, but then Sakari says some of them are authentic. So this is bringing, you know, and this is why this Christian said the Lord is not an author of confusion. And, um, Paul would be an author of confusion to some because the letters of Paul is hard to be understood. Right? So, um, let's get a scripture real quick before we get started and we dive into this lesson. The more we go into Agrippa, the more we start understanding things as we go on. Let's go to Romans 1 and 1. Okay, it says, Paul, a servant of Yahweh, says Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle separated unto the gospel right separate like holy of Yahweh separated unto the gospel of Yahweh so this is serious words here but to say that Paul every word of the letter of Paul was not authenticated is because as they say you lack hermeneutics <laughs> which hermeneutics just goes is the study of method, method methodology okay method method Ological principles of interpretation of the Bible. They just say, you know, I don't know why they say that, but sometimes you got to sound deep when it comes to these debates. But we keep it simple. Acts twenty six and twenty nine. Uh, where are we at? Acts twenty six and twenty nine. Going into Paul and Agrippa. We're going to try to dive into this. Be patient. I got a lot of commentary. Um, not all commentary is 100% foolproof, but then when you get into commentary, you go to other studies and certain things, and it kind of brings it all home once you start really understanding what's going on. So it says, And Paul said, I would to God, and not only to thou, I would to the power, not only to thou, but also all that hear me this day. We're both almost and altogether such as I am, except these bonds, which goes back to chains. So you have to see what's going on at that time. So when these Christians come up with the Agrippa, the Agrippa, the Lord try to convert um, Agrippa. I already know the story on Agrippa and his history on Harad Agrippa II, right? But we're going to read a little more commentary first. 
Okay, so it says, almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. Right? This is what it's saying in the commentary. At the cost of giving up all familiar and impressive text, it must be admitted that the Greek words cannot possibly bear the meaning which is thus put upon them. The word is literally, in with a little thou persuadest me. And it, so you can see how it's always little spins and words that say things. And it's not exactly what it's saying. It says, and this may be complexed by with little speech, with the labor of little evidence. So it says, see Ephesians 3 and 3, we'll get into that. We are precisely the same phrase rendered in the words of Agrippa's words, according to all expression, not on a uh, half belief, but of a cynical sneer. Right? We'll go into the word cynical. Thou art trying to make me a Christian of me with very few words on very slender grounds. Says here, so we can see that right here. I'm not going to read the rest of this, but we can see right here that Agrippa's words accordingly are expression not of half belief, but of a cynical sneer. So we're going to go to cynical. Let's see what cynical means. Having or showing the attitude or temper of cynic. Contemptuously distrustful of human nature and motives. Right? So it's a distrustful a distrustful um, phrase. It wasn't meant to be serious. Based on reflecting the belief that human conduct is motivated in purely, primarily by self-interest. Right? So we can see that. Um, even the, the, uh, the, the commentators, the writers who go into this understand this was not a serious statement where he was really trying to convert, okay, Agrippa. It was like impossible. That wasn't going to happen because he knew he wasn't a Jew. And we can see here, when you go into it, I'll, I'll jump into it a little bit. When you go into it, the Agrippa II was a he was this uh Herod the Gripper the second he wasn't like the first right so he was a little more playful he was a young man so he was a little more playful and easy to manipulate or jokingly he was a, a joker so to speak and this is why he made that uh that context uh, thou also persuaded me to be a Christian so he had a snicker and a laugh about it and Paul was using guile because he knew the, uh, the Jews was after him and he was dealing with the situation in prison and he know what happened to the Israelites, right? So, um, but if you know, if you really want to go into it, you have to go study it. You know, if you, if you rather just say, oh, the letters of Paul was not authenticated and this or that, then of course, I mean, this, that's why the work says study to show thyself to prove. It says, um, um, it says, luxurious man of the world, uh, sufficiently estranged from what is holy, instantly to banish uh, the transient impression with haughty, contemptuous mockery, the conduct of Pilate in John 18 and 38. Okay, thou persuadest me to be a Christian. This is another one. It says, this is sarcasm is meant to say thus uh, summarily thus brevi manu I guess they're going into Greek you will not manage to win me over to a Christian right so when he said not only thou he wasn't talking about Agrippa right and he says the original the original way it's, it's spelled you see how they spun it thus sum summarily thus uh, it says you will not manage to win me over to be a Christian. Of course, they don't put the snickers and the laughs in there, right? And you see how we take it. Um, and it says, okay, go to Ephesians 3. Let me see here. It says, that's some early, you will not manage me over to be a Christian. So that's pretty much on that. Pretty much it on that. Let me go to another one. It says, I wish you were such as I am, going into what he was saying. 
It says, might become such as I am, Paul avoids the word Christian, which for himself he might willingly have accepted, 1 Peter 4 and 16, but which was used by the king in a mocking sense, and therefore would not have made his wish seem accept an acceptable one. You may call me a Christian in mockery. My joy and hope and faith in Yahawashah are such that I know no better prayer for any than I wish you all the like blessings. So you can clearly see what did Yahawashah say? Live peaceably amongst all men. Agree with thine adversaries. All right, so this was a situation. Okay, um, it also says here a bribe. It says for it says from this it is clear, in spite of the leniency which Paul had been at first treated by Felix, that either because his case was deemed more serious in consequences of his being left in prison so long, or because he was just now. Uh, just now before the court as a prisoner the apostle had been apostle had been put in chains so we can clearly see when you really go to the understanding of it what must be clear is this wasn't the hardcore gripper that everybody thinks of so it wasn't like he was dealing with his father that was a totally different uh, animal right so this is bribe money or favor given promised in order to influence the judgment of conduct a person in position of trust right so let's read a little more on um, a little more on this let's go to Ephesians 3 and 3 first it says how that the revelation he made known unto me the mystery let me go up to one for this cause, I, Paul, the prisoner of Yahweh, for you Gentiles, Israelites, if you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of Yahweh, of the power, which is given me to you upward, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery. Now, this is precepting what these commentators are saying, right? As I wrote a four time in a four in a few words, right? Whereby. When ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Yahweh. Right? So, you get understand that. I'm trying to make this quick. You can Google any of this, you know, and it'll bring it right home. So, I want to um, uh, go into this just a little bit. It says, Harad Agrippa II was only 17 when his father Harad Agrippa I died. He was in Rome at the time he was flavored, I mean, favored by the Emperor Claudius. Claudius kept Agrippa II in Rome for a few more years, then made him uh, then made him tetriarch tet tet of the Syrian kingdom called Calix and gave him the responsibility to supervise the Temple of Jerusalem. Harad Agrippa II eventually gave up the territory to the Chalcis, but was granted the title of king and given more territory including that he had been ruled by Herod Philip Nero later uh, added to the territory including some of Galilee so it's a it's a lot to read on this but I'm going to read a little more and then jump down to the end it says the godfather of the Herod clan was Herod the Great the king uh, the king when Yahweh was born and one who tried to have him killed, Matthew 2, Herod Antipas ruled during the ministries of John the Baptist and Yahweh He is the one who had John executed and sat in judgment at one of Yahweh Shah's trials, Leviticus 23, 7-12. Herod Agrippa uh, the first was king of Judea um, for a few years and the one who had James executed his death is recorded in Acts 12 
So you can clearly see this was a different Agrippa. But the Christians will have you say, well, Agrippa is Agrippa. Nope, not the same. It's, it's so much to read on it. You can look this up. That, that had nothing to do with trying to convert him to be a Christian. Let's go on. Herod Agrippa II also makes a statement to Paul. Um, let me see here. Yeah. No, let me go here. The sentiments expressed in the hymn are noble, and certainly the Bible warns about waiting because today it is the day of salvation. They're going into, when he said it almost persuaded me to be a Christian and not the way, you know, Christians taking a spin it. However, the sermons and songs are based on poor translations of what Agrippa II actually said. There is no limit. No hint in Acts 25, 25 that Agrippa was seriously considering becoming a Christian. In fact, a more accurate translation of which I read earlier, you got to go into the translations, of what he said gives almost an opposite impression. Even the NIV states, do you think that is, is such a short time you can persuade me to be a Christian? That's what was supposed to have been said. In other words, Agrippa fully understood what Paul was trying to do, and he tells Paul plainly that it is not going to happen, at least not in such a short time. You see that? He said it's not going to happen, and then he used a cynical sneer, as we said before. But he understood that he could play Agrippa a little more, a battle of wits, and, and of course Paul was sharper than Agrippa, and he was a young man. He didn't know what the hell he was doing to a degree. And he shewed him favor. Remember, he was he knew about the, the, the practices of the Israelites. So all Paul was trying to do was use him. When a man's ways please the Lord, he make any, even his enemies to be at peace with thee. And that kind of just sums it up. Anyway, that's all I have on that, Shalom.